In this example, we will find the DH parameters for a cylindrical robot. Now, for this robot, we need to figure out which way do each of these joints move and put our Z axes there. So let's say that we can tell this first joint is revolute. So it will rotate. That is theta one, angle of that rotation. And then joints two and joints three are both prismatic. So this one, joint two, extends distance D2. And then joint three extends distance D3. L1 is given here as this height, which doesn't change. So let's just say L1 equals 0 0.1 meters. That'll be given. The first thing we're going to do is identify the joint axes. So that means ZI for each joint. And then next we put on the coordinate frames. with X going perpendicular. Then we find the DH parameters. Put those in the table. So we'll need theta, D, A, alpha for each frame. So then step four would be find link transformations. T i, T i minus one. And then finally, base two end effector transformation, multiplying all these together. So T n frame zero equals T one zero times T two one times dot 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 T n i minus one. So for this example, we're just going to get to the point where we fill out this table of parameters and from there it's just plug and chug with the transformation formulas and matrix multiplication. So first, let's find the joint axes. Well, it looks like the axis for joint one points up and so does the axis for joint two. but we also need the base frame with joint zero. So we'll say here, we know that these point up. So this is V zero and Z one, but we know that extends all the way here because it's just a direction. So we'll say Z zero, Z one, and then for joint two, let's say we need this one. This is going to be Z3. This is also Z2 coming from that. Next, the X direction needs to be perpendicular and we can see here where Z3 intersects with the other Z axes, X has to be perpendicular to that plane. So we'll say that X points out of the page. So X3, X2, uh, we need one coordinate frame here on this joint. So this will be X1 and then here on the base X0. So then we need to find each of these parameters. Well, we remember that theta is the angle between x's. D is the distance between x's. A is the distance between z axes. 
and alpha is the angle between z axes. So for frame one, then the angle between x0 and x1, what would that angle be? Well, we can see right here that joint's rotating, so that's going to be theta 1. Now, the angle between x axis of x1 and x2, those are actually the same angle because this joint, joint 2, is prismatic. It doesn't rotate. Same thing, joint 3 is prismatic, no rotation. So now distance between the x axes, we can see here L1 equals 0.1, and that's the distance between x0 and x1. So L1 equals 0.1. Now, for, to get from frame 1 to frame 2, those x distance, that's d2. That's given right here. So d2 is a variable because it's changing. And then x2 to x3, well, those are actually the same axis. Um, so then x2 to x3, x3 actually is on here. So that distance is going to be d3 between x2 to x3. Now we've used up all of those dimension variables. So that'll give us, that should give us a clue that nothing should be in the AI column, but we'll double check that by going through. So we need to know what is the parallel distance between Z axes. So Z0 to Z1, Z1, Z2, they're actually all on the same axis. So 0 to 1, 1 to 2, no difference. Now Z3, this is not parallel to the other Zs. It intersects. So since there's an intersection point, that distance is zero, but there is an angle between them. To get from Z2 to Z3, we had to go negative 90 degrees around that x-axis. Negative pi over two, but the other z axes, zero, one, and two, those are all in the same direction. So there is no angle between them. So this is our completed chart of DH parameters. If we wanted to calculate the position or an orientation of the tip, then we could just put these into the transformation matrix, and then we would be able to calculate position of each joint, multiply them all together, and get the final tip position. So if we wanted to find the, the end effector pose, we could plug each of these parameters into this formula ti i minus 1 to get each of the transformations. And we multiply them all together to get from base to tip. So transformation from the tip, which is 3 in frame 0, is going to be t of 1 and 0 using the first parameters times t 2 1 using frame 2 parameters times t three two using three parameters. So that's just matrix multiplication and you would get this final result. Then if you were given values that each of the joints had gone, theta one, d two, d three, you could find an exact position. Or you can just leave it as a function of these parameters, which will be valid for any robot configuration that is this same exact robot. Here's a MATLAB simulation to help with visualization. So this is pretty straightforward, just basically plugging in the parameters from the table. So you see here, finding the constants, so L1, and then finally the DH parameters for the joints that change, which is theta and D, we have initial and final. And then down here, we just calculate the joint transformations, the links, and then finally plot. So let's run it. You can see joint three goes out, joint two goes up, and then joint one rotates. 